Barstool Sports. Our tight end. Brandon Walker. Mostly sports. Welcome to Mostly Sports, presented by Jägermeister. I'm Mark Titus. He is Brandon Walker. Today is Friday, March 29th. We are live from Chicago, and we want to talk to you about Jägermeister. Uh, they wanted to mix things up, Brandon. They didn't want to get all boring with their ads. Ice cold. So we don't have to read the same ad every time. Mm-hmm. We're going to mix it up. By Ice the, cold. By doing what? Talking about the... Temperature. Ice cold shots. Mm-hmm. Man, ice that's... Ice cold shots. Damn, that's cold. Ice, ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn, Damn, that's cold. Ice, ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn, that's cold. cold. Ice that, 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 cold. That, I need, if the couch is going to do this, they need 100% participation on both. Connor's carrying the couch. Are we low energy today? Damn, that's cold. Connor's carrying the couch. Ice cold shots. Damn, Damn that's, that's cold. cold. Ice, ice cold, cold shots. shots. Damn, Damn, that's cold. cold. Ice cold shots. Damn, Damn that's, that's cold. cold. Ebo doesn't. He, Ebo's not. I got a little bit of what Brandon had, I think, at the beginning of the week. Mm. Positis? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I had. Yo! That's not what I had. Hold on. <laughs> NBS. Hold, hold on. I did not have Positis. Not built for this shit, Itis? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Shit. <laughs> Wherever you're at, if you're hanging with friends or at the bar, maybe you're doing all the sports stuff or just mostly sports stuff, call the shots. Cheers with Ice Cold Jägermeister. Remember to check out Jägermeister at Jägermeister.com. Drink responsibly. Jägermeister is a core 35% alcohol by volume. Imported by Mass Jägermeister, U.S. White Plains, New York. When they do those like radio spots and those guys yeah. say that really fast, are they saying it that fast or are they speeding it up later? I think they're saying it that fast. I think they have, this, I think they have skilled tongues. Express version because in a major league baseball. Yeah, I think they know express, how to say they're, 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 they're not the express version because they do not disseminate. They're not they're, they're, they're without the express version because in a major league baseball. I've never even considered disseminating stuff like that. What do you want to talk about, Brandon? <laughs> College basketball. Mm-hmm. It always bothers me when there's two there's two worlds, right? College football of which I dominate college basketball, of which you dominate, correct? So those two worlds are are often separate. But I have to suffer and watch Alabama and Clemson win national titles, and I have to suffer and watch those douchebag fans and those douchebag schools win and win and win and win and win. So when they get to go to the Elite Eight and when they get to win in basketball and they get to be happy in basketball too, I don't like it. I don't like them being happy. I don't like Alabama being happy. That's interesting. Um, yeah, because I I think this is, I Clemson is Clemson's a cool story. I think Clemson. Yeah, it is a cool story. Um, being good at basketball, Brad Brownell has been on the hot seat for like his entire career at Clemson. I, Brad Brownell like, every single year has been coaching for his job for a decade. For a decade. <laughs> Every every preseason article that's written, I think this year might be the first year. I think this fall you might see the first ever of the last decade, uh, the first ever what you need to know about college basketball preseason article where they list the coaches on the hot seat. Yeah. Brad Brownell is not there. I he think, should leave. I think he's coached his way off the hot he seat. He should leave right now. <laughs> As a springboard. Um, so, yeah, it is interesting because uh, – I think the college basketball part of me is is very excited about having new blood. Alabama and Clemson have never made a Final Four. To yeah. my Clemson has, and I think I don't think Alabama. Alabama has. hasn't yeah, either. Yeah, and Alabama's a pretty good program historically. That's that's gotten. They close. were ran- like Godfrey had them ranked number one with Mo Williams, I think, in 03. Godfrey had some teams. Like Godfrey that, like they had, had they yeah. they weren't horrendous. Wim um, Sanderson had some teams. Robert Ory made the Sweet Sixteen in. 19- I can't remember a time Clemson basketball has ever been super relevant in my life. I like, can't either. The they've only had time some good players, but it's never you've never really. I don't remember a Clemson run. I don't remember. I think they made the Elite Eight in 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 ninety. I think or maybe maybe the Sweet Sixteen. But UConn beat them with a uh, with a buzzer beater. Tate George. Yeah. I don't know why I've referenced the 1990 tournament twice in the span of three three seconds, but uh, I have. What else do you remember about the 1990 tournament? Uh, Kenny Anderson um, beat Michigan State or tied Michigan State. Where did Kenny Anderson play? Huh? Wh- Georgia Tech. He, was was he on the same team? With you asked Luke? me. You was asked he on the same team with? Luke? Well, I'm. No, no, no. Oh, you're th- okay. 
Was he on the same I team see with Luke the problem Schincher? here. You're thinking of Luke Schincher. Okay. The center for the 2004 team. Yeah. Uh, but no, no, Kenny Anderson wasn't didn't play with Luke Schincher. Luke Schincher on the 2004 team was not on the 1990 team. No, no. I... I'm not sure he might have been a fan of Luke Schincher we're talking about. Do you think Luke Schincher watched the 1990? Uh, he could have, but was Luke Schincher from the States? Or was he Australian? Uh, he is Australian. He's Australian. And he so plays, he might not even have been aware. He might have been too busy playing his didgeridoo, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he looked up what Luke Schincher's up to now. Have He's we playing a didgeridoo? Have we have we talked about Australia on the show very much? I don't think so. I think that's a blind spot for us. I'd like to go, but it does seem like everything's scary. Everything kills you, yeah. Everything kills you. The snakes kill you. The crocodiles kill you. The kangaroos will fuck around and try to kill you. Stingray's got. Uh, Stingray's got. You know, Steve Irwin. Yeah. Yeah. Was that in Australia though? Was that here? That might not. That might have been here. Um. Yeah. They got him. So is it is his kid just he is the crocodile sure. hunter now? Yes. Yeah, his both kid his is kids. both of them, Bindi and Wolf. Yeah, I thought Bindi took a run Steve at it, Junior. didn't it didn't stick, and now the, the boy's coming along and he's yeah. doing it. There are a lot of women who like are obsessed with his son. Really? Is he good? He's a heartthrob. Is yeah. he? Yeah. I need to see his son. And he's basically just his dad. Yeah. He's basically got the same demeanor. I mean, he's dad. he looks exactly like his dad. Yeah. He's not inherent. He's not really good looking. I guess it's just is he fearless? Is that what they like? Or he's rich? No, I don't it's, know. His, it's his demeanor. I think. I think he's got an infectious personality. You think he'll? <laughs> you think he'll? He'll go after a pussy like he goes after a crocodile. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Look at this one. Look at this. One. She's a beauty. You think he gets in the squat? <laughs> it just oh. <laughs> wrestles it to the ground. Got to be gentle with this one. <laughs> Uh, oh, look at this pile of shit. <laughs> look, at this, look at this pile of shit we got here. Now this shit, this is shit from a, oh, that's a that's a dung beetle. How did a dung beetle kind of got screwed? Yeah. There's a lot of beetles that don't have to deal with shit. Beetle Bailey. Beetle Bailey yep. led to Carl Hamm, who ha does have to deal with a lot of he, shit. He deals with a lot of shit. Uh, yes, beetles, as far as beetles go, being a beetle that has to... Roll around and shit all day. Better beetle, Bailey or Herbie the Love Bug? So what was what was Herbie the Love Bug's thing? I think he had he a talk? personality, but I don't think he talked. He did, his hood just like went his, up and down. Yeah, he would like communicate with his with his headlights, with his. It was like his tail wagging. Yeah, his hood going. yeah, he would just. Uh, you knew he was there and sentient, but I don't think he talked. Maybe he did talk. I don't know. And Kid he, from Knight Rider talked. And he won the Daytona 500 or some shit? I don't know what Herbie did, to be honest. Wasn't he in a race? Didn't Lindsay Lohan? Well, that's... The that, I mean, the remake. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, the 60s one that I saw, I just remember being like four years old and laughing hysterically at it, and my parents playing it over and over and over because they needed some time to go have drug-addled sex in the back of a Dodge Charger. Yeah. The but anyway, I think that's why Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, '60s were wild. You just you just thought of an object, and then you said, "What if it talked?" Or, or, you, or what if it? I don't even think you made it talk. Like, or what if it just like they put Flipper on TV? Flipper yeah, just never what, got yeah. out of the water. Yeah. We might what, need to. What if it could communicate with humans? What if a car? What if a horse? What yeah. if a dolphin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should go back to the '60s and. Although that's I mean, what I would do with my time machine is. I, I do kind of understand it because they, the first 1960, they came up with Mister Ed the Talking Horse, mm. and they spent the next ten years chasing that dream. Sliding. Lassie, mm -hmm. another one yep. that could talk, kind of, but not really. No, Lassie, Lassie would just bark. But, but, but they would understand. But yeah, they would, she would, would understand just them. Be barking noises. Yeah. <laughs> The barks would somehow it's, be yeah. fluent English. Connor, can you check this out? The original Lassie from 1962, is she dead? The dog that played Lassie? Yeah. yeah. We should get her on the show. Yeah. Like, uh, I do want to reach out and try to get show. her. We have a special guest on the show today, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's not Lassie. Lassie did die. What the fuck, dude? Why, eh. Did you at least try to get her before she died? Yeah, I'm sorry. Why? A lot of red tape or what? Yellow tape? Why would red you tape? tell us that Lassie died? Why would it be died? yellow tape? 
I don't know. A lot Why of would it be yellow? That's crime Why would it be yellow tape? Oh, crime scene. Um, no, no. no. What, what's the word? <laughs> Did you murder last scene? What's the expression? There's a lot of tape I had to go through or something like red that? Tape. Red, red tape. Red tape. Okay, yeah. Red tape. A lot yellow of red tape, tape to get to, to her team. Do you just... Does yellow tape stop you a lot? I don't know, dude. I, I didn't know what the expression was. I'm sorry. Also, why would you tell us that Lassie died? Why not just lie to us? I, I, you, you told me to look it up. You was living in Van Nuys. You told me to look it up. Is that where old people live? Uh, Van Nuys, Nuys is... Uh, Palm Springs? Palm Springs. Van Nuys is uh, with the workaholics guys made famous. Yeah. By sitting on the roof of their house in Van Nuys and okay. throwing beer bottles into their yard. Um, yeah. I think Van Nuys, you're venturing into the... Uh, the porn that goes on. Okay. The pornographic films. So Palm Springs where we put the old people. I think so, yeah. And rich people. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Um, Bama and Clemson won last night. Uh, I think Alabama came into this uh, w- tournament with a fatal flaw. They didn't play defense very well. Right. And it so far hasn't mattered or been exposed. Well, they're playing, they are playing better defense. They're playing better defense. Better. And their secondary stars, like last night um, – Grant the, Nelson. Grant Nelson, the big white kid. He he came into the season with a whole lot of hope. And I thought he was going to be a highlight factory. And I thought he was going to be their best player. And it really never happened for him in the regular yeah. season. He was solid. He was very solid. He'd give you 12 and 10. But he didn't show you that superstar. And then last night, superstar Grant Nelson showed It all up. came together. And it wasn't just that he scored a bunch. It was that. Blocking shots. He was blocking shots. He was uh, – it was how he was scoring, too, that they would just – have him go iso ball against whoever was guarding it didn't matter who was guarding carolina would throw guards at him he's like okay i'll just rise up above you and splash a three in your face yeah they put big guys on him he drives right past him and yeah looks like george mikan yeah i mean that for (sighs) i don't think george mikan ever did that do you think mikan the mikan drill kind of sucks doesn't it for remind me what the mic and drill is. The mic and drill is you just shoot layups over and over. Oh yes, stand under the basket. Yes. You shoot a right hand. You catch yeah. it. You shoot the left hand. And after about thirty seconds to a minute, your neck yeah. hurts very badly because you're just going like this the whole time. Yeah. And you're like, what are, what are we doing? You know, um, Mike gets credit for them having to widen the lane to take care of uh, his post moves, but I just think they hadn't. It was basketball was so young they hadn't even thought about how how wide the lane should be. Yeah. They hadn't even considered we should even have a lane at all. Because the lane used to look like a little penis. Yeah, it did. It, more, it looked like a pretty big penis, actually. I mean, it was like well, 15 feet yeah, long. 15 feet yeah. long. That's and, a uh, big penis. That would be. Well, I mean. A narrow penis with a big head. Comparatively, anything that would have a 15-foot penis, if the per, if that thing is 100 feet tall or if that thing is 300 feet point. tall. It's a good point. At, at, if, if the arena is – if we consider that to be the body, yes, the penis might be a little small. If it's a twenty five thousand seat arena, that's a small. That penis. would be a small penis. If it's an eight hundred seat arena for a high school, that's a huge. That penis. would be a huge penis. But then you've got high school boys on it. <sighs> that's <laughs> problematic to say the least. Uh, I think uh, I think you might be onto something though. I think there are a lot of rules, especially in basketball, that were put in place. And they just never really tested whether these were the. <laughs> oh, hey, there oh, he is. Hey, Golkey. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Have Jack Golkey himself. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. How are we doing? The legend Jack Golkey. <laughs> yes, sir. How uh, how much has your life changed in the last few days? Man, can't even describe it. It's uh. A week ago, like I don't, no one knew who I was. Here I am right now, sitting on oh, the living couch. the dream, living the dream. On the uh, the number one golf, hockey, baseball, tennis show in the world. In the world, uh, or the, we have the best segment. Anybody want to figure out the man's headphones for Connor? What are you doing? He just needs his headphones Connor, figured he out. He just doesn't wants to put his headphones on. Okay, fine. They're like just, they're like twisted. Yeah, Connor's having ah, a bad show so it. far. Yeah, this is not a good show. You don't have to put them on him, Connor. <laughs> There we go. We're locked in. We're locked in. Unbelievable. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You getting some shots up this morning? Yeah, you know, got to work on your craft every day, man. Should I just should we just yeah, let's do we it. just acknowledge it? Um, this is between you two. So I I don't I'm not going to say anything. I'm clearly not I'm just a third wheel here. I wouldn't, do you I want w- me to set it up for you? 
I'll I'll just say it. Uh, I wouldn't say I, I'm the number one biggest Jack Golke fan at yeah. this company because not because I don't like Jack. Uh, yeah, I, I fucking love the guy, and, yeah. and um, it was very fun to watch him in two NCAA tournament games. It's just that you know the the way Jerry and Dan fawn over him. I don't know if I can get to that level, <laughs> yeah. but I'm close. Yeah. I'm close. Right? I'm I'm up there. I'm, I appreciate good shooters. Uh, I appreciate he he plays the game of basketball the way. I would love to play the game of basketball. I've said nothing but glowing things about this man. Um, I walk into the to the office today mm-hmm. at about eight thirty. Yeah, I'm groggy eyed. Late night last night, sure. a lot of basketball. We did a show after. Uh, tried to get as much sleep as I could. Woke up, came into the show, trying to get myself awake and and, and get the blood pumping a little bit. And uh, Golki just walks up to me and he's like, "Are we doing a three point contest?" And just comes from my neck, straight just out up of nowhere. Like I'm not that. even. I mean, had my morning coffee, Brandon. Eight thirty in the morning, really? That's competitive, where we're at. man. I mean, as you're shooting jumpers and getting ready, I'm getting loose. I'm ready to go. This man's wearing a oh. gay denim jacket, and you just <laughs> walk up to him and you say, "Hey, let's have a contest." Yeah. So what? Where? Like, I guess I'm going for the crown. Yeah, I know. I guess. I well, guess, it's not a crown. I guess it's fuck Golki for me now. <laughs> I guess I gotta. I, I gotta go back on everything I said. Are you willing? To put your Chili's three for me. Everybody wants this. I didn't realize the power that this trophy had until uh, we have Tate's. The the girl on Tate's team was yeah. challenging me. Now Golki wants yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's uh, a that's a trophy everyone wants. Everybody everyone wants this trophy. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll, we might do something a little later. I, as I told you, I'm an old man. It takes me a while to warm up. So like we, if we're going to do something, it's not going to be at 830. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about just around the horn, 25 shots, five racks? Five, five by five. A good old five by five, five by five contest. Five by five. I yeah. saw you shoot a rack today. You only made two of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, the racks spot? are tough. The racks are tough. If if you give give us a passer, we'll be all right. It is it is weird shooting off a rack, isn't it? Because yeah, it's, not, it's just unnatural. That's why I got to get used to it. I got the yeah. three point contest next Thursday, and I've never shot off a rack before. So um, yeah, you are doing the you are doing the college three point contest. Yep. Uh, do you know who else is doing it? Uh, J- uh battle from Ohio State. I saw. Oh. And uh, Bowie Bowie from uh, Northwestern, okay. but I didn't see who else. I just saw those two. You want to call those guys out right now, or you want? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think I need to. Okay. I think it's <laughs> fair enough. I'm coming in the favor. <laughs> so. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, walk me through the Kentucky experience. Um, I feel like athletes have one of two mindsets when you're you're having a game like that. Like some athletes say that they are aware of the moment and as it's going on, there's like something in their head that's like, I'm doing this against Kentucky. I'm the fucking man. And that like gives them juice is like uh, being aware of what this moment is. And it kind of pulls them up to a level. Others seem to say like, I don't worry about all the outside noise. I just focus on when I catch the ball, I'm trying to put it in the basket. I don't focus on like, you know, I'm going to get John Calipari fired or that, you know, (laughs) you know, whatever else I'm just focused on, what's ahead of me right now and I don't care what the jerseys say on the other team which camp would you say you were in as you're hitting 10 threes against the big bad Kentucky Wildcats I'm definitely the second camp like anytime I step out there it's I kind of just forget everything else that's going on yeah like I'm just locked into my teammates and like how the defense is playing that type of thing like I don't really see the crowd I don't really see like the name on their jerseys type thing you know what I mean and uh I mean once we got out there like it was just it's just another basketball game. Obviously, it's a tremendous atmosphere and stuff like that. But, um, I mean, they didn't – like, they weren't – it wasn't like we were playing an NBA team. Obviously, they have NBA players. But yeah. they weren't, like, intimidating physically, that type of thing. And uh, the only thing I would say I did notice is, like, once I made – I had made a good amount of threes in the first half, come out for the second half. Every time – I've never really noticed the crowd before, but every time I touch the ball, the crowd, like – like rose out of their yeah. seats and like you could hear the air in the building like I had never noticed anything like that before and that was really cool like I I'll always remember that, that yeah was, that was sick yeah you shot 372 shots this year <laughs> 364 of them were three pointers did you never just want to go dunk on somebody <laughs> there was there's was a couple games where I was like give me like guys give me a leak out so I can get a quick dunk here but uh, my first, my first two point basket of the year was actually a, a leak out layup that got goaltended. So, so, <laughs> so I leak out, I'm sprinting, I'm like, oh, easy layup, throw that thing up. Thankfully it hit off the backboard before he beat it up. But yeah, that was what, what's the thought process with you coming off the bench? 
I I started the first half of the season and we were solid, but we just weren't we didn't have as much of a rhythm as a team. And uh, I think coach just wanted to go with a more defensive lineup to start the game. Yeah. Uh, so then I would just come in at the 16 minute timeout, but then wouldn't really come out the rest of the game yeah. play 36 minutes so he as soon as we switched we kind of just got on a roll and then he just wasn't gonna he switch just stuck it, with it it was very funny to see you against NC State play 42 minutes off the bench that's a, that's <laughs> yeah. a rare you don't see that every like time. everything about you is like a rarity yeah it's like you don't shoot twos you play 42 minutes off the bench every time you step on the floor I feel like I'm seeing shit I've never seen before um but what I uh yeah so um what what are, what are we doing today? Well, you you're here for the whole car wash. You're just doing Yeah, we're doing uh the yak challenge at some point. Awesome. Um I think we're doing like a three point like I think they want me to set a line. I set it at seventy eight and a half on the on PMT, but everyone said I was sandbagging. Of what? You have to shoot threes out of a hundred. Everyone said I was sandbagging you can, you though. Can make so. more than I can, I can, yeah, but I, I was gonna say like oh. when I was on the show, I was gonna say like eighty five and a half, but then Hold I was on. like time, 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 time. Hundred three pointers. Yep. And you're saying saying seventy eight and a half is sandbagging? That's yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's, that's not four, even. That's less than even, four out of five. Yeah, that's like that's not even close to a lot. Like go like, <laughs> like there, there, there are days seventy nine threes. There are days where I'm going to speak for him. There are days where he could hit like ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, it should. Uh, the realistic is probably like eighty four and a half. Yeah, maybe. But I just didn't. I didn't want to say eighty five. How are you surprised by this? I just feel like that's a high number, even if you're just shooting an empty gym. Even if you're just, I think yeah. that's a high number. It is, but like this is. Th- I know it's. I know it's Jack Golke. I, I, I'm looking at him. I saw the game. I watched. The game. I don't know that you did, dude. I watched Kentucky players chasing him around, not knowing what to do. I saw that shit. They don't have a good coach. What do you want me to say? No, it's it actually funny seeing like the comments to that game, and everyone's like, not everyone, but some people like. Like he's getting lucky making these shots. It's like no, I practice those exact yeah. shots every single day. You seem better at, at shots with the hand in your face fading away than you did wide open. For sure, I don't know what it is, especially in the rhythm of, of a game. If I like have it going, I would much rather be coming off a screen. Yeah. Than like just stand how do still you, catch and shoot. How do you get that green light? Like, did, is that something you felt like you had to earn? I was going to ask that. Because you shot twenty three pointers. What, the fuck? what is happening? <laughs> what, what, did, what did you just do right there? I'm agreeing with your question. He's stealing your question. You're stealing my question, bro. No, no, that's a, that's a great question, question, Brandon. I'm agreeing with your question. <laughs> well, uh, I was in the middle of asking a good question. No, because I had the good question. That was how, my good question. How do you earn that green light? Because you shot twenty three pointers. That's my good question. There's a lot of three point shooters out in this country that would. Jack, 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 just shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying how to ask you, a fucking I, question. I, that was my question. How do you earn the green light? Like, how do you... <laughs> how do you get that green light? <laughs> because you shot so... The 23 is a lot. That's you a know? lot of threes. How do you earn that? Uh, and, and please talk to me. <laughs> I have a question. How do you... So, a lot of good shooters go to their their colleges, and uh, uh, there are a lot of guys around the country that can shoot the basketball well, but they're not given the freedom to necessarily shoot fadeaways with, with two hands in their face every time they touch the ball. How do you get the green light? Like, how do, is that something you earned, or you just, like, at the second you stepped on campus, you had that green light? Let me stop you there, Jack. <laughs> quick quick query before you answer that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is over. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, Coach Campy, he recruited me for that role. He, he's had that type of player in the past, and uh, he kind of – he does a good job of explaining to the team why he wants someone to do that because – of the attention it draws and uh, like the defense is always going to have at least one guy on your hip. And then if you're coming off screens, there's going to be another guy paying attention to you. So it just frees up the rest of the team. And, um, it just through, I mean, working hard in the summer, he sees like the amount of shots I'm shooting each day, the, the pace I'm going at during workouts and stuff like that. So there was honestly a time in the, of the year where, um, I was kind of trying just to fit in because I was the new guy and I wasn't, wasn't, taken as crazy of shots and things like that and he pulled me to the side and he said hey like you make this team better when you're shooting bad shots so you kind of, you kind of just need a coach like that to be honest because um as good of a shooter as I think I am there's there's also other great shooters in this country that mm-hmm. that don't have that type of green light and it just comes down to the type of coaching that's really. interesting you said that that he he told you you shooting bad shots makes the team better um I have a belief that guys like you uh you don't know even necessarily have to make shots that that when a defense sees a guy like you just pull from anywhere 
they start they start shitting their pants because they're just mm-hmm. like, oh my god, th- this feels different than anything we've seen before. And even if you start like zero for five, you've added a wrinkle to the game that's like we have to guard him a little differently. What if he does start hitting? Um, is that a reality? Is that do do you feel that when you're out there? That's like even because like when we were watching against Kentucky and even NC State, you would airball a couple of them, and I I Jerry. Jerry would always inevitably, and I think he was doing it on purpose to like get get, get your mojo back. You would airball a shot, and Jerry would be like, "He's lost it. He's done." Yeah. He's done. And then the very <laughs> next shot, you would hit, and I was like, "I don't. He's not losing it. He's like, he's just keeping the defense honest. Like the the more you shoot, just insane fucking shots, the more the defense is like scrambling, and they just completely break down because they've never seen anything like you. Is that is that true? Is that like your approach to to yeah. to, to shooting? For sure. That's a uh... That's a great point, and I mean, yeah, like I've I've got a lot of bad misses out there on film for sure, and that's just that's just the cost of doing business, to be honest. Um, and there's even been games where, yeah, I start 0 for 4, but the defense is still locked in on me. Like they're not gonna kind of relax just because I miss a couple shots. Yeah. So you're for, you're definitely right. It, it frees up my teammates for slips to the basket, all that all that good stuff. And um, I mean, it just boils down to they're going to eventually go in. Like Jerry was asking me last night, he's like, if you start 0 for 9, like um, RJ Davis was like, are you like, okay, let's rein it in or like, yeah, let's keep. And I'm like, no, like you got to keep going. I've always, I've always told my teammates and my coaches, like if you, if you want me to stop shooting, if you think it's a bad night for me, you want me to stop shooting, you got to put me on the bench (laughs) because if I'm in and I get a catch the ball, I'm putting that shit up. So like, all right. Well, don't bullshit me on this because you guys played Kentucky, right? You beat them 80 to yeah. 76. You made 10 out of 23s. You're playing – every player on that court pretty much was a five-star. His whole life he's been the best player on the court. He's not used to losing, and they're damn sure not going to lose to Oakland. Yeah. Okay? At what point did their mindset switch from, oh, oh shit, like we're, we're the biggest bad guys on the block. We're not we're not losing to these – to Oakland. To, to what? What? Hmm? What I say? We're not losing to these Oakland. <laughs> you said we're not losing we're not losing. I was gonna to say these, these morons, oh, okay. but I, morons doesn't really fit. <laughs> morons doesn't really okay. fit in the context of what I'm trying to ask. Okay. So at what point did their did, did you see their body language flip like now they're chasing you? Uh there was a I don't remember which shot it was after, but it was the first half and actually I think it was I was running towards the left corner and I honestly didn't even think I was gonna make it. I caught it and kind of just fired it out. That was the one like the Peter Griffin one that everyone was posting. Yeah. 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 And I I buried that one. And as I'm running back down, I I I usually talk a little shit to the opposing coach. Yeah. And I was about to say something to Cal, but he just had this like already defeated look on his face. Yeah. And I was just like, I can't even say anything to him. <laughs> like we're ten minutes into the game and they're already like scrambling. So I was just like, all right, we got him. Wait, what would like, you have said? I I don't like say anything crazy, but I just be like, like you got to send another guy or like, yeah. like he like switch who's guarding me basically, yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, NC State <laughs> plays tonight. Uh, they they knocked you guys out mm-hmm. in in overtime. Um, they are the they kind of supplanted you as the Cinderella now. You yeah. know, they're their power conference team, and you know it's. It's it's weird to think of an ACC team as a Cinderella, but that's just where we're at with this tournament. Uh, do you do you think this team, like, yeah? What what are your thoughts on NC State as as uh, we're looking at the bracket and uh, at some point it feels like the the, the clock is going to strike midnight on mm-hmm. them. But you probably know them better than than most, given that you just played them. Like, do you think this team is is built for to beat Marquette and maybe yeah. keep going? Um, I mean, Marquette's a really good team. Uh, being from Milwaukee, I follow them pretty closely, know a lot of their guys. So um, I am probably rooting for Marquette, but yeah. NC State is – they're really tough. I mean, especially going against them Saturday, they did a tremendous job of just making the game as physical as possible. And that's like – that's what you should do if you're an ACC team playing against a Horizon League team. Um, and, I mean, we handled it pretty well, but, uh, I mean, Burns, he, you know, he's just a load. And mm-hmm. he – like I swear, it felt like we were almost playing against like left-handed Jokic out there because some of the shots he was throwing in, like just high, like faders, kissing him off the glass and stuff. And um, if he can, if he can get it rolling like that, and, and Horn's a really good guard, and mm-hmm. they just have really good role players. I think that's that's really important. Is 
guys who know what they're out there to do. Mm-hmm. They had a couple guys come in, make big threes, and, and just defend. And um, Mo Diara, that their uh, four-man rebounds the crap out of the ball. And, I mean, I think against Marquette, it'll come down to the wire because just the way and they've, what, played seven games in, like, 12 days or something like that. Now they finally got three or four days off to rest, and they're going to come back ready to roll. I mean, they're – Probably the hottest team in the country besides maybe Illinois. Um, yeah, they're, they're a tough matchup for sure. You ever eaten in Mater's in Milwaukee? I can't say I have. It's no. pretty good. It's a German restaurant. It's down by the the Forum. I like it. It has a good pork shank. Okay. I'll have to check that out. You're, you're, uh, you, you grew up a Marquette fan? Or? I'm not a Marquette fan, but like. Oh, you, who'd you, grow, you grew up in Milwaukee? Yeah. Who'd you like growing up? Like what college? I, I I love to do this with great players. I'm like, what school did you want? Yeah, to go to? Uh, when I was like, when I was actually a kid, I was a Badger fan, like Frank Kaminsky, Sam Decker, because uh, my my whole family pretty much went to Wisconsin. Um, I mean, I always liked Marquette, but uh, I was more of a Badger. You're more guy. of a Badger fan, mm-hmm. yeah. So if they would have offered you, you oh, Wisconsin really Wisconsin. fucked that up. Yeah, that's why I love <laughs> it's doing like it. the perfect Badger over there. <laughs> it's, it's like what Cam Newton did to you with Mississippi State. It's fun. It's fun to do that to people. He, he, like, he took a lot of money. There's, there's a different school? <laughs> different thing there. Uh, all right. Well, you want to hang out, Golki? Yeah, I mean, I'm cool. Want to shoot the cool. shit? What do you want to? You just you just put up shot. Like, what, what does a workout look like for you? You 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 lifting? You do you do you work on oh, ball handling? Do you work on anything else? Even you, bullshit with layup drills. You you shot. Fuck no. <laughs> if I, I I can't remember if the, if this was the Kentucky game or then she stayed. I think it was the Kentucky one. That was the one you hit ten threes. Um, you dribbled three times I think in that entire game. Yeah, someone, someone like posted a clip of the ten makes and it was like ten makes like four dribbles or something like. So that. yeah, like when you're when you go to a gym to work out, do you even bother ball handling? Do we bother? Um, I mean, literally since, anything than bombing threes. <laughs> since the season's been over, um, I've I've started to work on that stuff just because. Uh, trying to be a pro like you gotta obviously yeah. you gotta expand your game but this season in particular like i would just come in i would shoot some form shots like get loose shoot some mid-ranges and then i would literally only shoot threes for like an hour and a half <laughs> like coming off screens spot shots like side step back side dribbles only threes you're like the exact opposite of every other nba prospect where the the, the stereotypical nba prospect is like a guy who's athletic as fuck yeah but can't really shoot yeah and, and teams are like we're gonna take we're gonna take him in the lottery because we can turn him into a shooter we'll yeah. just teach him how to shoot we'll yeah. just teach him Golki, it's like i think we can teach him how to dribble we teach, <laughs> him, uh, teach him layups yeah we'll, we'll teach, teach, we'll teach him we'll show him uh norman dale teaching hickory high how to chest pass gonna make We're gonna pop. Teach him. he's gonna make a pop make a pop we'll teach Golki how to dribble and pass <laughs> we can definitely <laughs> teach him that shit why not um all right well who do uh who do we like in this in this bracket then are you gonna, are you gonna watch the tournament or are you a guy that's like it's it's too bitter that, that yeah. we're out now and i don't know if i can watch that because it i'm kind of a makes me sad yeah i'm kind of like a I'm over it type of guy. Yeah. Like, it's NBA season now for me. I get that. I can't really watch college anymore, especially, like, I can't watch NC State Marquette because if NC State, like, keeps that a game and Marquette doesn't blow them out, I'm going to be like, we we would have been in the Elite Eight. Yeah. So. Like, every every game NC State wins from here is like a twist of the knife for you. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like, that could have been us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That sucks. Um, All right. Well. I got to talk about Dave and Buster's. The chance of getting a perfect bracket is one in 120.2 billion. Best of luck for the rest of us. Instead of not watching after a bracket is busted, why not be rewarded for it? This March, when you lose, you win at Dave and Buster's. Throughout the tournament, we're washing away your sorrows with $2 beers. Terms and conditions apply, and anyone whose bracket has been busted could DM Dave and Buster's with a picture of their bracket across social media handles. In reward, Dave and Buster's will be giving away 1 million chips of free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions do apply, but hurry. All chips will be given away and must be redeemed at your local Dave & Buster's before the tournament ends. Come to Dave & Buster's for $2 beers all tournament long and DM your busted bracket to Dave & Buster's for uh, for free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. Um, what else do we want to do while we have Jack Olkey here? Uh, we can do whatever. Um, I mean, it's not like we can show him a clip of a horse playing baseball. So I mean, what, we could. I mean, I can let you guys get back to your show. Like, I don't. I don't well, know you're gonna wanna. You're gonna wanna. <laughs> yeah, you gotta see this. I, I, I mean, I'm gonna not... need you. I'm gonna need you to stay right there. For okay. A second, okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> you're a great athlete. If we could, uh, show I'm sure him. you would appreciate. You, <laughs> you would appreciate seeing another Wait, great athlete. You can't. That horse didn't hit a baseball. That's impressive. That's 382. Wow. Yeah, in the gap. This is against Sandy Koufax, Jack. Yeah. Just rounding the base. Grade. 
pitchers. I mean, look at that pace. Uh-oh, close play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good stuff yeah <laughs> we show that to everybody um, all right well we'll see you on the yak yeah let's leave some and you are there. you are gonna you're not gonna are go out like do a bitch it on right? the yak? i mean what, go out like a bitch what you are gonna do it right yeah but i gotta i tried to i mean if I, you don't want to do it just you can just say it now and i'll drop oh, it wow i tried I'll, to, he's the <laughs> I'll drop it I never wanted to do it. I told you this guy's a better. He's shooter. talking to you. Why are you looking at me? Because I'm scared of him. <laughs> I'm right. scared of we're what gonna, he's we're gonna do of. it. He's gonna do it. We'll do it. Um, I I, I do I do appre- like I I feel like this is I need to change my attitude. I was, I felt like a guy like you punching down was a little cruel. No, it's you're, like you're 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 way better than me, and for you to just come in and be like. I'm gonna step all over these ants. Um, I was like, "What? What did I do to you, Golki? I I don't need you to fucking crush me." But now I see it as a sign of respect. It's more of like, yeah, yeah. you're you're one of those guys. You're known for I shooting see it the as basketball. a sign of respect. So before we'll, he, before he walked in, you said you were gonna cook this overrated I said that, motherfucker. I said that, Brandon, Brandon, don't do this right now. I said this off air. <laughs> it's between me and you. All right, all right. Sorry, it's sorry. This sorry. was before I. This was before he called my bluff. <laughs> no, you're great. You're great. Appreciate it. Uh, all right, we'll see you on the act, and uh, yeah, we might have yes, to sir. do a we might have to do a three point. Thanks for having me on. This is fun. All right, Thanks, Jack Olkey, everybody. Jack, do we clap? How do we? Do family. How do we, family. Family. Oh, uh, Jack, get the mic real quick. Say the word, family. Family. Thank you. You want to sign the sign? Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Do we have a mark? We have a sharpie. Sign the sign. I can we grab need to be prepared. Get Jack Olkey to sign the sign. Um. Let's have him awkwardly stand there and wait. Jack, do you want a mason jar full of marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass, but thank you. What else were we sending? We were sending all these gummies. I have. Uh, oh, we have a blowjob book if you'd like that. Yeah. Uh, the, a going away present. Are we signed by? Just, just wherever you want to sign. The blow by blow. We're going to read this on air. This was the. Uh, we'll, Ryan- do some, we'll do reading hour at 10 o'clock. This is the Ryan Shazier book, right? Oh, is it? All right, Jack. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Um, Thanks, Jack. I meant to ask him, but we can ask him. Uh, well, he's right. Yeah. No, no, well, uh, he's leaving. I didn't want to actually ask him. Okay. What did you mean to ask him? I, I jumped the gun on that. Okay. Um, Do you think people always call him Golki, or do you think that just kind of happened now? That was a better question than anything we asked him. I feel like... It feels like everybody's called him Jack his entire life. I think and his then parents the, call him Jack. And then in the like, I I bet his coaches call him maybe not. His but teachers I, call him Jack. I could see a world where like no one called him by his last name, but then in these last in this last week, he's just become goalkeeper to everybody. His coaches definitely yeah. have always called him goalkeeper, right? You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Because in in in, I guess uh, we'll never know. It was a question I wanted an answer to, and uh, sadly. <laughs> We never got the opportunity. We never got the opportunity. <laughs> we ran out of time. Were you Mark or Titus? Um, Would you always play for your dad, though? or No, I didn't. I never played for my dad. I thought you did. I never played for my dad. My dad specifically did not want to coach me. Oh, that's right. You told me that. Because he didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Because cause you sucked. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, I got called Titus a lot because I had an older brother, and I think – when I was coming through school, the teachers just remembered me as like the second iteration. Yeah, of the, there's you know, another one. There's a ti- there's another Titus boy, whatever. Um, yeah, so maybe that wasn't a good question about Golki. Right. You you really showed that you weren't a real athlete when you asked that question about uh, yeah the 78 three point makes. Yeah, telling on yourself there. Bro. That was telling on a yourself. tough look for you. Telling on yourself, bro. <laughs> that 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 coming from you. That's crazy. Listen. 78 threes out of 100 is pretty goddamn good. No, it's not, dude. You're picturing. In an empty gym with nobody on you at your own pace, a guy like that could easily make 78. You keep doing this. You keep like. I think that's still, even for a great shooter. Even for a great shooter. I mean, I guess I should see it the other way. I should say, like, thanks for gassing up the shooters of the world. But, like, no, I, I, that, if, if. If Jack Olkey went to a, an empty gym and hit 78 out of 100 threes, he is 100% walking away just like, fuck, I didn't have it today. 
every single time that if he shot yeah under any context if he hits has 78 out of 100 he's like i was off today all right i would feel that way and he's a way better you, shooter you than think 75 is is no problem I don't want to say no problem because I don't want to make it seem like I can do it every single time on the court. I will say if I went out there and shot 100 threes and I only made 75, I would be very disappointed in myself. But you're also not not tuned up the way he is. Yeah, he I'm, just came I'm off a season. He's 36 years old yeah. and my body's breaking down. And um, I brought a – I'm now walking around with a back massaging cane. I thought you were joking <laughs> at first. No, I have knots in my back. That's where – that's that's really why I'm sad about Jack Olkey challenging me is because he saw me at a bet. I, I think he saw weakness. Yeah. I walked in groggy-eyed, and I'm just sitting in this chair, like, massaging my – I'm just like, fuck. Oh, I get this This is something back. a 90-year-old man I know. Have. And then Golkey saw that, and he's like, I'm going to challenge him now. <laughs> yeah. I got his ass. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Uh, North Carolina and Arizona both lost last night, and uh, that is funny because I don't know if you're aware of the storylines surrounding – Carolina, you know Caleb Love, right? Yeah. From the, the guy who mm -hmm. who ended Coach K. Yeah. He was on Carolina. Yeah. Last year they're the pre tried to transfer to Michigan. Yeah. Last year they're the preseason number one team in the country. They missed the tournament. Uh, a little bit of a dysfunctional team. There are rumors swirling about a woman coming in between R.J. Davis mm -hmm. and Caleb Love. I don't know how true those are, but those were out there. Um, yeah. And so he he was kind of the scapegoat of North Carolina basketball last year. Transfers to Arizona. He had an awesome year. He's he was an All American. I don't know what team first, second, third, whatever. But he yeah, Pac twelve Player of the Year. Uh, and it was it was all set up, Brandon, for North Carolina versus Arizona in the Elite Eight. R J Davis versus Caleb Love. Both of them were a little erratic last year. Both of them have a ton of talent, though. Whose fault was it? We'll find out yeah. on Saturday. We're gonna settle this shit. In the Elite Eight in Los Angeles, mano y mano, these guys are going to go up against each other, and we'll see who's the better player. And uh, instead, they combined to go 0 for 18 last night, the two of them in their two games, and both their teams lost. 0 for 18. They were both horrendous, and that is so perfectly poetic. That is such a perfect way for both of their careers to end. And I'm not, I'm not like reveling in their demise, but also I'm just a guy who appreciates a good – yeah. A good ending, and that's that's the perfect yeah. way for it to end. Just um, like just like Katie Johnson double pumping for Auburn was a perfect way for his Auburn career to end. For the end the two day. guys that got wrapped up in some bullshit. Their yeah. their careers ending on some bullshit. For two two just like kind of erratic guys who are unbelievably talented and yeah. could, could score from anywhere and and um yeah and and looked awesome at times, but also would shoot you out of games for for them to both. It's like it's like the w whenever they get in the same gym together, they just they're oil and water, and I think that's what happened. I think I think Caleb Love and R.J. Davis were in the same gym last night. They weren't on the same court at the same well, time. They sensed each other. They sensed each other's presence, and something happened where they both sucked ass. I think that's what <laughs> I think that's what happened last night. <laughs> um, yeah, Carolina. Really Carolina loses. They were one seed. They loses. They lost to a very talented team in a in a bang bang game. Couldn't have gone either way, right? Arizona's establishing a pattern Arizona it's there's two patterns being established one is Tommy Lloyd the other is the University of Arizona men's basketball program as a whole mm -hmm. um under Chiefs they cannot stop shooting themselves in the dick and I pick Arizona to go far in every single bracket I fill out Brandon they Why look like a they look good but we're old enough to remember when this wasn't the case with Arizona they won. They've only won one title, but they they used to go to Final Fours pretty regularly, right? Like the Lou Olson years, they were they were always they were the, always in the mix. Yeah, and you would never say that Arizona choked in March, but now I don't know what the fuck's going on. They Tommy Lloyd is uh, Tommy Lloyd is positioning himself as a uh, I don't want to say he's a choker yet. I don't think three years makes you a choker, but yeah. Do you watch the game last night? They they looked horrendously coached. They were making their so, their defense. They were getting back cut like crazy. That's that's the thing. The, the coming down the stretch were terrible. Come down the stretch of the last four minutes, they were scoring, and they would stay between three and five points behind because they could never ever 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 get the one stop. Yeah, there was a timeout with about three minutes to go, and it got down to nine on the shot clock. Actually, it was inside two minutes. Brownell got to within nine on the shot clock. Took a timeout, and you and and the way he took it, you're like, God damn, Brownell knows something. Mm -hmm. Clemson comes out, runs one little cut on the they they get Ballo out, yeah, and then they dive to the basket and they score so easily, 
And they did that the rest of the game. They scored so easily the rest of the game when all Arizona needed was one stop. They could not it, get it. And it's not just that Arizona was getting back up because uh, guys get – if you're playing aggressive defense, you can get back up. But um, they're, they're – you can get back cut, and it's like it's the individual's fault because he was – yeah. You know, uh, tr too far in the the help side passing lane, and the guy back cut him, and he had a hand right there, but he just I was just out of reach, and I was like, "Fuck!" I was one step off, and I I misplayed that. Whatever. They were getting back cut, and then all pointing at each other, and like, "What the? You were supposed to uh, f the fuck up? Systemic, f yeah, systemic problem." Um, the closeouts were horrible. Dudes closing out like without putting a hand up, leaving guys wide open, um, uh, biting on shot fakes. They were stepping out of – they had multiple occasions where guys stepped on the sideline on offense, yeah. which is not good. Um, <laughs> just the, the horrendous turnovers. Arizona just – if that was the first time you watched a Tommy Lloyd coach basketball team, you would be convinced that this guy has no idea what he's doing, Yeah, that it's just a clown show in Tucson, um, which is crazy because Tommy Lloyd has a great reputation as a basketball coach. He just uh, – I don't know. He can't get out of his own way in March, I guess. He's one of those stubborn guys that just keeps trusting. He just, like, kind of sits there, and he's like, no, just keep – keep. you know what? I know we've missed every three tonight. Just keep going. Just keep going. Yeah. You guys got it. Just go. Just keep doing it. It'll work out eventually, and then it just didn't work out. Twin Peaks is your tournament headquarters for every single game with scratch eats like sauce and toss wings, hand-smashed burgers, flatbreads. You can watch all day long. The Lodge has the coldest beer in the game at a frosty 29 degrees. Damn, that's cold. Ball out with handcrafted cocktails and grandpa's stash of high-end bottles. Every seat's got scenic views with wall-to-wall -wall TVs and undefeated service from the Twin Peaks girls. Get your axe to the lodge for scenic views of every game all tournament long at the number one sports bar, Twin Peaks. Um, I guess you you want to do some uh, you want to do hockey, golf, baseball, tennis? Yeah, I think we should. Hockey, golf, but we are the golf, number hockey, one golf, hockey, baseball, tennis. We are the number one golf, hockey, baseball, tennis. Yep. Um, I did so right there. I was thinking about it. Did. And and you, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. When I was thinking if we if we substitute lacrosse in, it could be a lacrosse, golf, baseball, tennis. Um, but it says right there, golf, hockey, baseball. Tennis. I know, but if we did lacrosse, golf, baseball, tennis, uh, there's a category for that in in Apple Podcasts. I think we could dominate. So if we did lacrosse, golf, baseball, tennis. We could be the number. But we just get rid of hockey at that point. I don't. Well, well no, uh, no, no, no. We would need uh, we need extra sports so we could put a plus at the end. It'd or, be lacrosse, golf, lacrosse, golf, baseball, tennis plus. Uh, oh, Quidditch is also a sports. We could get a we could get Q in there too. So we could be a lacrosse, golf, baseball, tennis, Quidditch plus. And then just put the yeah. plus on the end, which yeah. covers all of all yeah, of them. yeah. The number one LGBTQ <laughs> plus podcast. <laughs> it's out there for us. Sounds good. That sounds. <laughs> Like something we is anybody else even like doing this? <laughs> that sounds like something we should pursue. I'll um, look into this to see if there's anybody else. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm kind of curious as what. Oh, you're curious. What, are, you? what, are, <laughs> what are the best gay podcast names? <laughs> that one about's a pretty good one. Yeah, I bet there's some that are gay. That's a good they're clever. Gay yeah, people are funny. Um, yeah. What uh? <laughs> what happened on opening day yesterday? Yeah. What happened on opening day, Ebo? Uh, Tyler O'Neill hit another homer. Okay. Fifth straight opening day with a home run. Okay. Uh, the Rocky season is over. They have been eliminated from the playoffs on day one. Why are they that bad? They're that bad. And they have the craziest thing is they signed Chris Bryant to like all that money. I thought people thought the A's were going to be that bad. The A's lost. The A's nothing. and the Rockies are both going to be that bad. They're both that bad. Yeah. Last year, we thought the A's and the Royals were going to be that bad, and the Royals were not that bad. No, not that bad. Do we know why the Rockies are so bad? I said it yesterday I'm that uh, – or maybe I said it with Nate a couple of days. I don't know. I remember we, we brought it up. Like, I don't know why – if you're a, if you're a slugger, why you wouldn't – if you're a free agent slugger, why not go to Denver? I'd go, straight, like a, I'd go straight there. Just juice your numbers. That would be awesome. Well, um, I think they have the opposite problem where they can't get the pitchers they, to come the in. And also, more, they can't really spend money – or they don't. They can't spend money, but they don't. But they should just try to load up on sluggers. They should try to do what they did in the nineties and and steroid them all up and just win every game fifteen to fourteen. Yeah. Yes. Um, the Rockies had a I do think great owner, steroid lineup. They had a great steroid lineup. They. Uh, I do think their ownership is dog shit, right? Because I think. Uh, yeah. I have a vague familiarity with uh, 
with with the Denver sports scene and uh, the rock. I, I I go to Rockies games like every summer, and the last couple of times I've gone, you go to Rockies games every yeah, summer. I have a reason to be out in that part of the country mm-hmm. every summer. Um, yeah, and and it feels like it, like the the problem that the Rockies had to, from my perspective is like going to the games is too much fun. That the ownership is like we don't even have to put a winner on the field. Like everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves slamming Coors Lights and right field porch at the at Coors Field or whatever. Mm. And people it's like a great time. The stadium is downtown. Uh I think that and and it works against them. It's almost like too fun to go and it like worked against them. And I think the ownership was like, who gives a f- why would the fuck would we spend money on wins, dude? We still have people showing up to the games. And I think in the last couple of years people are kind of coming around on like this sucks watching this team lose every single time they take yeah. the field. How many major league baseball stadiums have you been to? Great question, Brandon. Uh, Dodger Stadium? Yes. Been to Dodger Stadium. When did you go there? Uh, I when he was a tourist. Bro. No. no that's, you're so fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> you're, so, you're so stupid. <laughs> I thought we've talked about this. Uh, no, I, I would go to Dodgers games often when I lived in Los Angeles. Uh, I have been to – I'm going to go in order. I've been to the Red Sox. Uh-huh. I've been to, that's Fenway. Okay, but I'm just reading the team names. But I said stadium. So now, okay, <laughs> I've been to the Yankees. Uh huh. What's that stadium called? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I have been to. That's it in the AL East. Yeah. I've you been, been to, to the old Yankee Stadium and the new Yankee Stadium. Both. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's both. Two. Not to that's not two. to you know not to. That's extra point. Rag, but. That's a. Big uh, point. I've been to Cleveland. I've been to Detroit. I've been to Minnesota. No, I haven't been to Minnesota. Oh, wow, you've been to a lot. I've been to White Sox. I've been to Royals. I've been to Rangers. I've been to Astros, I've been to Angels, I've been to Mariners. Cubs. Uh, that was the American League. You've been to this many National baseball? League, I've been to Atlanta, I've been to Philly, I've been to the Nationals, I've been to the Reds, I've been to the Pirates, I've been to the Cubs and Cardinals, I've been to the Dodgers, I've been to the Rockies. So that's a lot. I feel like that's You've been to like 25 half. states? Yeah. Well, which one's the best? Uh, PNC Park. Yeah, Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, because you, you don't do that. Like, if you're traveling somewhere, you I would like love. To I don't. I don't travel in the summer that much. Uh, I, the, the the nature of my job. I'm traveling. Doing most of my traveling in the fall. And, and yeah, uh, I would just like yeah. If I if I was in a city and there was a baseball game, I just paid five bucks. For I definitely would. Was, yeah. Huh. I got in the habit of doing that. Yeah. I've been to. I've been to four. That's what? it. What? Are you serious? Well, hold on. No, no, no. I've been to more now. I've been to. All three Atlanta stadiums. Does that count for three or just one? One. I feel like that counts for one. Okay. That's fine. That's why I would count it for one as well. I've been to City Field, Yankee Stadium, Wrigley Field. That's it? You you haven't been to Milwaukee? Milwaukee. You've been to Milwaukee. Yeah, I went to Milwaukee. Five. I've been to five. I haven't been to Milwaukee. We've got to fix that this summer. I'll come up to that. It's pretty good. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Petco is awesome, but that might just be a San Diego effect. Yeah, yeah I, it's all open. Ter- there's no like cover on the terrace area, dude. I I thought I would go to Petco all the time, and um, I just got lazy. Mm-hmm. I I really regret not going to Petco because I, I, yeah, everybody says those games are a ton of fun. And, yeah. Um. Yeah, I was like, I'll just go to the next one. Next, oh, they're in town next week. I'll just go next weekend, and then I just mm-hmm. never went. Next weekend, never came. Never weekend. Yeah, it's a sad story. Um, I want to go to Pittsburgh, and Baltimore, and Boston. Those are the three I want to go to. Philly's yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Philly's good. Yeah. Oh right. well, yeah, they have the best fans. Well, the Eagles fans right October. don't go there, right? The Phillies win yesterday. Uh, didn't play yesterday. Oh, game was postponed to today, two o'clock central. Opening day. But yeah, in a way, it is our opening day. Yeah. How come you're not wearing a jersey? Uh, because I get made fun of when I wear jerseys not on Thursday, so I'm wearing a jersey today. <laughs> Are you sassy today? I don't know. I, I had a nice run on the treadmill this morning. I'm feeling good. I got like a nice little edge to me today. You also sent us a Star Wars clip. Yeah, that was uh, that was because um at like seven a.m. I think that was my alarm this morning. It, it did kind of sound like a, a Star Wars alarm clock. It uh was because we got the pork shirt sent to us yesterday, so I sent a video of the pork screeching with Chewbacca <laughs> on the Millennium Falcon. The planet of Octu. You know that not one of us. That's a pork. I sent that to you guys. Not one of us came out of that show yesterday wondering what a porg was. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we were all on the same page when it came to the shirt. That clip was so funny. 
Yeah, none of us wanted more poured content. <laughs> none, none of us, us were like wanted this conversation at all. None like, of us were like, that was an awesome shirt. You know what I need more of in my life is porg. porg. I thought it was a good way to wake some people up. I don't know. <sighs> so porg's an Ewok? No. What, it, they're similar. It kind of looks like a Furby, right? Not at all. It's it does kind of look like a It's a Furby. Furby. Yeah, yeah. Porgs and Ewoks what don't look really similar. Is a porg like what? What if if could a porg if if, if Chewbacca fucked that porg could they reproduce? Uh, no. the okay. The porg is a porg. Chewbacca did try to eat a porg one time. He roasted it over a fire, and then the so he porg, killed the porg. Yeah, and then the porgs who were still living looked at him all sad, like you just killed our friend, and then he didn't eat it. Just all sad. They weren't like. But he already killed it. Yeah, I know. Well, actually, technically, they never show him eating it on camera, but maybe he did off camera. I don't know. That's in the last Jedi. And people the Porg still one. hung out with him? No, 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 no. Well, that, they that... were more so irritating him after the fact. They lived in the Millennium Falcon chewing on all the wires and shit. But if you killed one of my guys, I wouldn't just be like, you rascal. Yeah, if somebody came in oh, here that's and, so annoying. and killed Ebo, I don't think we'd be like, hey, don't kill Ebo again. I think. But you're yeah, still cool. Yeah, we'd I, have to. we'd have to rise up and. I think they had an overall understanding of the circle of life and how there is an element where eventually, yeah, there's predator and prey. He made up for his. Well, Chewbacca was a predator. Chewbacca murderer. Chewbacca's killed people. Yeah. Who's got the highest body count? In Luke Skywalker by a mile. Yeah. He's the bad guy. Uh, I I'd like to ask. You that watch question. those movies, you realize yeah. Luke is the bad guy the whole time. I'd like to ask the body count in the other way. Yeah. Who's got the highest body count in Star Wars? Um. Oh, it's got to be Han. Han. There's only like one woman, right? Captain no, Kirk no. was. He, I mean, Kirk William was Shatner was yeah. fucking. Lan no, Lando for sure. Lando was getting. Calrissian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lando. Last name. Is it. Is that racist? Is it just because he was black? No, because they've said. There's a whole sub story in Rise of Skywalker where he might have like an illegitimate child because he was just like. Were there STDs in the galaxy? Uh. Undetermined. This Chalamet kid is getting up there, though. I mean, he's he's making Chalamet. a run for. Yeah. You think they use this move? He he might be. <laughs> Chalamet was using that at the end of Dune too, dude. He had yeah. the, the he, was, he was doing two girls, <laughs> yeah. wasn't he? Am I wrong? Wait, yeah. No, I mean, oh, he was. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why they called it Dune too. Wait, so is he gonna Dune three? <laughs> Seems that way. Yeah. I, so. huh. I can't wait for you to run that joke back when Dune three comes out. I'm excited for I mean, Dune we, Three. He's sassy. See how sassy he is. Yeah. I'm. I, that was. I love that joke. I love the Dune Two joke. Yeah, you can tell because I think, yeah, the best way to demonstrate how much you love a joke is to be straight faced and sassy. No, I, I think that's going to be a fun payoff when Dune Three. Dude, comes I out. shouldn't have pulled this cane out, dude. I can't. Well, I can't I'm. I'm. Cause you're I, making it I, worse. I know. I started. I started trying to get this knot out, and now I just. I can't focus on anything else. I just got to fucking. Oh my god. It's so bad. It's 10 o'clock, so we're going to do our annual Friday tradition of uh, our annual Friday tradition. Dueling, dueling reading. I'll read a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where I'm at. I think that was it. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. I'll just read a couple of paragraphs of Wilson Rawls' Where the Red Fern Grows, and then I have an update on Wilson Rawls and Where the Red Fern Grows. The dog-wanting disease never did leave me altogether. With the new work I was doing, helping Papa, it just kind of burned itself down and left a big sore on my heart. Every time I'd see a coon track down our fields or along the riverbanks, the old sore would get all festered up and start hurting again. Just when I had given up all hope of ever owning a good hound, something <laughs> wonderful happened. The good Lord figured I'd hurt enough, and it was time to lend a helping hand. All right, you when you are playing an instrument, strings vibrate, hands move, sound waves crash around the room all of this going on at the same time and beautiful music is heard fellatio the art and trust me it is an art of oral sex is the same phenomenon mouth hands m motion and emotion all mixed together at the same time and the beautiful music of your lover's satisfaction is heard anyone can pick up an instrument and make noise but to really play it takes knowledge skill and practice 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 this guide will provide you with the first two of those elements and then the practice is up to you ready to get started Let's begin. It all started one day when I was, while I was, it all started one day while I was hoeing corn down in our field close to the river. Across the river, a party of fishermen had been camped for several days. 
I heard the old Maxwell car as it snorted and chugged its way out of the bottoms. I knew they were leaving, throwing down my hoe. I ran down to the river and waded across at a place called the Shannon Ford. I hurried to the campground. A common question that gets asked in sex education circles is what is the most important sex organ? The answer is supposed to be the brain. While it is true that our sexuality actually does start and come to a glorious finish because of the chemical responses and arousal signals sent by the brain, it is a very incomplete answer to the riddle of human sexual... I need a pillow. <laughs> Why? Uh, unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> I do think... I, I could read this book. There's not. There's not a lot of... Not a lot of the irony here, Brandon. Yeah, not a lot of meat to this uh, <laughs> blow by blow, step by step guide on how to give blowjobs so explosive that he will be willing to do anything for it. This was the book. These were the books, the Ryan Shazier mm -hmm. books, right? Yep. These were the actual ones. Um, I put the uh, the ultimate guide to anal sex for women up there. I feel like the, the the ultimate guide for anal sex for men. Just fucking throw it in. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like a one. It's just like I feel like the the blowjob book should be about three sentences long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the step by step guide on how to give blowjobs. Uh, just kind of suck on that thing. <laughs> yeah, just that's really it, man. Find it, grab it, suck it. Suck it. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate guide to anal sex for women. I do imagine women need more of a guide for anal sex. Men, it's just like stick it in the other hole. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's that is that is really it. The guide for men is just like you know that other hole that's down there. Use that one instead. Um. <sighs> TJ, you said the the uniforms are bad. Yeah, the Yankees were all sweated through their uniforms last night. Mm, I didn't see that. And it is March, not August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is March. Um, so there's the the material's bad. It's thin. It's uh, also apparently yeah, the grays don't really match. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's not great. Oh, how, he That's sweats from his shoulders? I understand back sweat, but shoulder sweat? At some point, they got to do something, right? Like, they got to – are they just going to do this 162 games this yeah, year? Yeah, can we bail out of this thing? This feels like the uh, when the NBA switched basketballs and then Kobe and LeBron were like, no. Uh -uh. no. Yeah. And the NBA was um, like, okay. Um, no. <laughs> Kobe and LeBron said, um, can you not? <laughs> And then the NBA just switched the basketball in the middle of the season. Uh, that's what I feel like is going to happen with these uniforms. But Rob Manfred, kind of a dumb bitch at times. Um, however, yesterday, due to us and his games, opening day was trending worldwide mm -hmm. all day. Yeah. And he baseball kind of loosely inspired our opening day. So does that make him the best commissioner in sports? Rob Manfred is who I'm asking. The jury's still out. Who's winning the World Series? No idea. Who, based on yesterday, what's the overreaction? Uh, Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks, right? The Diamondbacks beat the... Uh... Yankees won, right? Yep. Young core. Want to know? The O's won. By four over the Astros. Mm -hmm. So they're probably winning it. Maybe. I saw enough yesterday that I... I... World Series. Orioles were winning the yeah, World, World Series. Series. The Cubs are done. Oh, uh, yeah, we lost an extras. Justin Steele. They almost got away with it pulled his hamstring it looks like he's going to be out for how long is a hamstring it could be hamstrings are i think forever. it lingers those yeah. are linger those yeah. that's just he's just he's a hamstring guy now forever well and then that's a bad injury for a pitcher right because you got to push off that thing yeah you would think i guess that's probably a bad injury for everybody just about anyone yeah there's like, nobody in baseball that's going to escape a hamstring pitcher might actually be the best because you know i think pitcher run. would be the worst wouldn't he who's the best a uh, catcher would be the worst because he he has to use them just to do his job like you engage your hamstrings just to crouch, right? But a pitcher doesn't have to hit and run. But he has to pitch, pitch. He does have to pitch and pitch. Um, huh. Worst. What's the best? Oh, uh, yeah. What's the best position in baseball to to, to DH tear your hamstring or just pull your hamstring? DH. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If that doesn't count, probably right field. Doesn't that get the least action? Yeah. You, you still got to. Still would suck. You still got to, like, shag fly balls and shit. Maybe third first, base. First base? Maybe third or first base. First? Yeah. Yeah. Because third base, a lot of your plays are just quick reaction, you know, all that. What's your number one nagging injury that you've had in your life that that is akin to a – I'm talking about, like, akin to an athlete's injury, not, like, a diabetes flare-up. I mean, <laughs> like a 
like your groin or your no your knees or your ankles or something. I heard about this book you guys got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, smokes. Uh, smokes wants the book. Step by step, uh, how to give blowjobs. Is that the one you want? The step by step guide on how to give blowjobs. You know what? You know what? I'll Let give this to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You You've take been that. trying to learn how to give blowjobs. How to give a good blowjob. No, I got to give this to someone else. <laughs> I will not name her name, but. And uh, Phillies, Mets. Garrett, you can't say that word. Play of the day, both of them. <laughs> I mean, that good. wasn't a play. He what just he, said. He just gave a. He, he said two he words. Just gave a pick. And the Mets. They don't play each other. They don't play each other. Smoke. Oh, I thought they played each other. I have two picks, and if they lose, this is not a. I'm this pussy. isn't the pick show. I know. I'm just telling you, so you have something to like bet on. <laughs> Phillies, Mets. That's it. <laughs> Good luck learning how to do a blowjob. Thank you. You need practice? I don't know. Maybe I'll practice on you. But shit. Oh, oh damn shit. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> he fucking got you. He just threatened me. <laughs> <laughs> he just threatened to keep talking <laughs> shit and I'll suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> he just threatened to suck my dick. <laughs> suck your dick, bro. <laughs> that is a good threat. Yeah, dude. He fucking got you. <laughs> uh, the Phillies don't play the Mets. No, I we played the what, I thought that's what he did. I thought he came in and he no, was no, like, no. I got a college basketball pick for you tonight. Houston, Duke. <laughs> Take that one. <laughs> I thought that's what he did. Uh, Want to do an ad? Yeah, I do. Uh, this segment is brought to you by Wall. Cutting your hair at home isn't as hard as you think. Give your first DIY haircut the old college try with help from Wall. Wall is the brand used by professionals and has been in business for over 100 years. Being confident in your hairstyle is empowering. Guards aren't just for on the court. The Keller Pro Cordless Clipper is your styling MVP with an array of easy-to-see attachment guards, ensuring you can easily score the perfect haircut length. Color Pro Cordless is rechargeable and wireless, which allows you to use the clipper on the go or when it's charging because looking sharp should be a slam dunk. Buy the Wall Cordless Color Pro today. Wall. Mm-mm-mm. All right, where are we at? Fictional characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe Dirt, Ace Ventura. So, Ace Ventura feels like a uh, an Elvis uh-huh. adjacent haircut. Yeah. Um, Joe Dirt, which is the more tryhard haircut? If you saw it in the, because I I do think there's an element of that. Like it, they they both are good, but okay. I think today, but I think if you're a tryhard, it kind of takes away from the coolness. The answer is it, both the same haircut because. There are a lot of tryhards that do the Joe Dirt haircut. Yeah. But there are a lot of people that are not tryhards and not even trying to accomplish the Joe Dirt haircut that have the Joe, Joe Dirt, Dirt haircut. haircut. Yeah. That that haircut exists in people that are not trying to They're do anything. They're just going about living their lives. Yeah. And as it turns out, they have the Joe Dirt haircut. I'm going to say Joe Dirt takes this. Because the, the Ace Ventura haircut is, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. And it was clearly done in a comedy style. Joe Dirt's just living his life. Hmm. I might agree with you, yeah. Um I think the mullet I think Joe Dirt's mullet is too long though. I think it should go down to his shoulders. I think he's gotta trim that up. Mm-hmm. I think the uh the the yeah, it's it's a little try hard too. I don't I'll, I'll probably go Joe Dirt, yeah. Can I say can I say something? Sure is too much like Elvis. What would, would you guys I've never seen Joe Dirt? Great. Uh, I was never interested in a David Yeah, you kind of lived it, didn't you? Huh? You kind of lived it. I was living in a single-wide trailer at the yeah, time. Yeah, there was nothing kinda, Joe Dirt was going to tell me yeah, that I was going to learn. Um, you, you, as it turns out, you saw Joe Dirt a lot. You've seen it many times. Yeah. You don't need to see Live it. Live with him. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Blutman. Yep. So. Uh, we, we heard the breaking news, or at least I did. The, we have a final four of the soup bracket. How did we arrive at this final four? What is the final four? Are you ready to reveal it on air? Soup Nardi quit. Brostin got sick, so it all was up to me. Okay. And we've we've arrived, and it's looking good. Um, we'll have an update coming here shortly of breaking news with the soup rack. You're talking into a mic right now. Yeah, you're live on the air. Um, oh, it's a mess. 13 oh, seeded she crab shocks the world by winning the one soup region. Good. That's good. Over oh, tomato best miso ramen. Just why was qual- ramen disqualified? Qualified in chicken noodle. Uh, it was argued it wasn't actually a soup, so it got DQ'd after the first weekend. Pretty whole, simple. The whole team got COVID. Yeah. Well, it's there's the no COVID. Of, in the I have a shitty game. job by the committee to put some put a team in. They're going to end up disqualifying. Yeah. 
it's part of the mess it's part of the chaos it's part of the what anything could happen in a soup bracket is this unprecedented in soup bracket history no it's probably happened before chili <laughs> chili, chili in 2003 <laughs> Chile in 2003, uh, so yeah, we all remember. She crab, 13 seed, makes a run to the final four. Wow. Who could have seen it coming? I didn't even know what she crab was two weeks ago. It's delicious. Good to hear. Um, so we just have one member. Well, no, the- they'll be taking on the one seed, French onion, <laughs> out of the two soup region. <laughs> and on the other side of the final four, <laughs> it's an oops, two okay. seeded New England clam chowder. Takes on okay. the one seed broccoli cheddar, broccoli cheddar versus mm, all right. clam chowder. All right, so we got clam chowder, broccoli cheddar. We have she crab versus who is it again? French, uh, French onion French versus onion. broc. Okay, so clam chowder, mm-hmm. French onion cheddar, barely French escaped on- their first round matchup against Kakaliki. Uh, Max really was pulling for Kakaliki. He said it's the best soup he's ever had, but not enough votes to. To get uh, cockaliki through. So Max sure. loves cock. What was it? A leaky. Cockaliki. Okay. Leaky. Cock-a-leaky. Leaky. Cock-a-leaky. Leaky cock. That's yeah. What? Like cockaliki. Cockaliki. It's what? like Polish. What are you doing? <laughs> I won't say. It. Do you like cockaliki, Brandon? Stick to sandwiches, bro. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. <laughs> say it again, you miss. Say it again. Say it again. You like cockaliki, Brandon? I've never had cockaliki. How you cockaliki these nuts? <laughs> oh my god, Ebo! Wait, I just don't like how we're making fun of the soup bracket. <laughs> That's really insensitive. I don't know how did tomato bisque not make it out of the first first weekend? Because it's tomato crab, fucking bisque. It's she crab. Sometimes pizza. keep it simple, stupid. You know. Maybe they kiss kind of the, yeah. like slacked off in the regular season and get that seat and have to play she crab in the first weekend. Mm. Be better. Uh, French onion, I know, is very popular. Yep. I haven't had a fr- lot of French onion soup in my life, as it turns out. What are, what are the marks of a great French onion soup? It's. You know, I'll let Brandon take. First this of all, one. it'll kill you. Yeah. You'll choke on that thing in a heartbeat. We're talking about the French onion or the cockaliki. <laughs> no, I've never choked on the cockaliki. Okay. Um. I gotta wonder if half the uh, half the field here, the final four, is clam chowder and she crab. It seems like seafood had a. Had a big seafood, year. Here. Seafood, the, the refs of the the soup bracket were biased towards seafood. Are you just a seafood guy? And they got a, a favorable. Ref. They got a favorable <laughs> whistle. People are saying they got a favorable. Well, whistle. what are you, There's, the committee, or what? what that are this you? is rigged for ratings. You're, you're purposely putting Caitlin Clark through to the final four for I'm, ratings. I'm the. Do you have stock in a seafood company? No, I just I like seafood. I I don't like other seafoods. I like <laughs> <laughs> like I like I like the idea of she crab making a run. Everyone was pulling for him. Everyone was saying this is under sea. They shouldn't be a thirteen. I thought, hey, this could be, this would be good for the bracket. Shake things up. Um, and you know they're they're running into a buzz saw. So we'll see if they can make it past them. But uh, New England clam chowder, I'm not even excited about. I, I wish they weren't there. It doesn't sound good to me at all. Well, how how'd you put it there? Because I cater to the people, and people love New England clam chowder. People do love New England clam chowder. I don't understand what we're trying to do. Them. Pick this apart, that apart, etc. We we barely have talked. <laughs> yeah, we've we haven't really done that at all. Yeah. We've 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 offered like two comments. Also, Blutman, for Airfly the, says. the sandwich bracket and the candy bracket, oh. you were picking apart nonstop. Oh, no, no, no. The just a few things are... here and there. He, he you know. Blutman, Where, where's Terrain's things bracket? Yeah, we don't know where that. Yeah, is. we He's are. We are that. due for the. It's not good. Well, it's things and stuff. Okay, and stuff. well, out of the other two brackets, Blutman, which would you say was the most terribly put together? Was it the sandwich or the candy bar bracket? <laughs> <laughs> we know the answer. We don't. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> we do know the answer. Ty- Tyus knows the answer. Yeah, I know the answer. Um, why don't you go ahead and say it? <laughs> <laughs> Connors, it, if your presentation, the memes were funny, they were on point, but man, when you just listed one, two, three, four, the seeds like that, instead of a one sixteen, it eight, did feel nine, like amateur hour. That, I, was, it, that so was bad. bad. But that in terms bad. of the actual items I put on there, compared to panini, open faced, that's all I could think about. Right. I can't think about the. the 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 bland grilled chicken breast sandwich you had in there it's an action whatever (laughs) 
if I put a 16 seed on there, yeah, it's probably going to be a bad sandwich. Chicken breast wasn't that. I know, but I'm saying, like, there are going to be bad sandwiches in a 64 fucking sandwich. I couldn't, I couldn't keep track because. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, now, I'll do better next year. Next I'm not sure year. you're going to get a chance next year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, Evo's also had some issues. Oh, um, wow. Same font for everything. <laughs> an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, we did an S curve. Ugh, you the committee met, even, made an S curve. You didn't have. Then we scrubbed. You didn't have Milka. You this didn't is, have. You didn't have Coffee Crisp, the number one chocolate in all of Canada. Mark Blutman was furious. Texted me why you didn't have Coffee Crisp. <laughs> number one chocolate of Canada, Brandon. You Coffee had Christmas. Starburst in there. We were Irish. Starburst comes in a bar. Comes in a bar. Starburst comes in a bar. You had Starburst bar. on the candy comes bar. In bar. I, so comes in a bar. You comes did, in a bar. Hold on, you did this. Comes in a bar. When you authorized Reese's Cup. Evo, you authorize Reese's authorize Cup. Reese's Cup. You, you not to Starburst. Not to Starburst. Wait, Brandon, comes in a bar. It's a slippery slope. Once you say Reese's Cup is a, is a candy bar. It does not come in a bar. It comes in a package of it's individually wrapped cubes. Wrapped in a what? Wrapped in a what? No, no, no. Pull up, the pull shape up the long, it makes. Pull up the, long the shape it makes is, is pull up the doesn't matter. Starburst. And I will say there's a better argument for Starburst being a candy bar than Reese's Cup. You cannot take ever had a Starburst Reese's and you Cup. saw it, a, a Starburst uh, king size <laughs> sitting on the on the candy rack. You be like, damn, that looks like a good candy bar. No, you wouldn't. No, because you know inside it's individually wrapped. No, if you've never had it before. These are also small bars, no. They also have bags. Well, it's of it's them. the the square rectangle. Brandon, you okayed the Reese's Cup. I think I yeah. think the blood is on your hands. Listen, Starburst could be upset in the first round by evil. by the fifteen. I gave you an inch. I said you could have Reese's Cups on your lower bracket, and I probably shouldn't have done that. And then you take a mile by putting oh, Starburst on there. I took two miles, probably right. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, it was egregious. Xanax. Was very egregious. He Xanax. Xanax. Might. He had drugs. <laughs> he had drugs in his candy bar bracket. It'd be a real shame if Xanax made it to the Final Four and Evo, live on air, had to sample all four of yeah. the Final Four. Especially if Xanax won their Final Four matchup, too. And, I, and they had, to, had play to do the it again. They had to play the championship game. Well, at the end of the day, this is why we do the brackets. <laughs> the chance Phantom. of getting a perfect bracket is 1 in 122.2 billion. Best of luck. For the rest of us, instead of not watching after our bracket is busted, why not be rewarded for it? This March, when you lose, you win at Dave & Buster's. Throughout the tournament, we're washing away your sorrows with $2 beers. Terms and conditions apply. Anyone whose bracket has been busted can DM Dave & Buster's with a picture of their bracket across social media handles. In reward, Dave & Buster's will be giving away 1 million chips of free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. But hurry, all chips will be given away and must be redeemed at your local Dave & Buster's before the tournament ends. Come to Dave & Buster's for $2 beers all tournament long and DM your busted bracket to Dave & Buster's for free gameplay while supplies last. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, what else we got on the silly sheet? Um, uh, I, the one stood out to me. Two stood out to me, actually. China has a big problem with super gonorrhea. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Resistant to antibiotics. Super gonorrhea. Mm -hmm. If public health alarm bells could somehow hit a higher pitch, a study published Thursday from researchers in China would accomplish it. The study surveyed gonorrhea, bacterial isolates. Uh, okay, what? The study surveyed gonorrhea, bacterial okay. isolates, and then the the Syria gonorrhea, gonorrhea from around the country, and found that the prevalence of something resistant isolates nearly tripled between 2017 and 2021. So triaxone resistant Cetriaxone. strains made up only represent. Break this down for me. Um, basically, gonorrhea is the STD that is the most likely to become completely resistant to antibiotics over the years. Mm -hmm. And it's doing that at an alarming rate in China. Wow. Super gonorrhea is out of control. In China. So gonorrhea has figured out our medicines. Yeah. It knows our strategy and it's... Eventually, we're all going to have it. Is it, un is it. is it unbeatable or is there... Well, I, one of my friends recently... Um, beat it or... Beat gonorrhea. I'm so, so proud. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Well, how how, how long? Well, actual tears in his eyes. I'm so proud of. I'm so proud of Titus. So, beat his we're, <laughs> there, we're we might not be able. We're we're entering a world where we might not be able to control gonorrhea. 
Uh, yeah, that's a funny story. <laughs> that's silly, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, it's that's just crazy. Chinese gonorrhea, though. You don't have Chinese Oh, gonorrhea. so as long as... You didn't get it from an Asian hooker or something. Yeah, you gotta go to China. To... <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, like, I, I, when diseases start in China, they just stay there. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. We don't have to worry about There's them There's oceans spreading. between us. How's it gonna get we don't here? We have to worry about them spreading <laughs> all the way over to America. We're good. We're good. We're now... Good. We'll be fine. Punxsutawney Phil's just getting it in? The story's so nice, you put it on here twice. Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking. Punks yeah, you did put this on the prep sheet. Oh, guy, double, double. Uh, trying to reach you your double headline, punks. Yeah, well, yeah, he's, yeah. well, he's double. He's fucking. You're trying to reach your word. Really trying to drive the point home. Uh, punks, Tony Phil, and partner Phil, this welcome to Baby Groundhogs. Uh, the weather predicting groundhog, <laughs> punks, <laughs> Tony Phil, and his partner, Phyllis, <laughs> have sprung a surprise nobody saw coming. Welcoming to Baby Groundhogs of the world. How do you not see this coming? Can groundhogs be pregnant? You don't even realize it. Are we the? Now I'm curious. Like, what species don't show that they're pregnant? Humans show that they're pregnant. You can tell that a woman is pregnant because she posts pictures on Instagram of her touching her belly. Dogs. That's, that's the sign. Do. You know that she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, dogs appear to be pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Cats. You can tell there's kittens in there. I think every animal you can tell. But how it says that the groundhog it seems to be a surprise. Were we not monitoring the groundhog? Yeah, how do we not know that the groundhog was pregnant? Also, do the people of Punxsutawney, are they... Should we trust them with the groundhogs if, if they're allowing them to have sex? It's a good point. They're keep, they're they're not focused on the, the, the weather. The, the real mission, which is the weather. Yeah. And they're naming... They got Punxsutawney Phil, and he gets a girlfriend, they just name her Phyllis? Yeah, that's wild. Well, I don't think that they would name her after they were already started dating. That's probably what brought them together. It was probably Phil was in the dating pool. He met Phyllis. But does that mean every every groundhog in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, every male is named Phil, every female is no, named Phyllis? No, I think it's the opposite. I think there's only one Phil and one Phyllis, and that's like they they bumped into each other at a bar, and yeah. they were like, you're A Phyllis? groundhog I'm, bar or a human bar? Uh, a groundhog bar. Yeah. And they they started talking they're like you're phyllis i'm phil wouldn't it be that's that's pretty crazy like we kind of have the same name but i think this is how like taylor lautner he yeah. he married a taylor right madison bumgarner used to date a girl named madison bumgarner but what great point phil, this is this is this is very natural this is a this this is something that happens let me throw something out in nature all the time would phil be able to go to a regular groundhog bar he's like the lebron james of groundhogs he would need like protection he would need he would have security. He probably wouldn't even go to a normal bar. He'd probably get bottle service. He might even go to. Phyllis is a gold digger, is what you're saying. She's. Well, we know she. I mean, she is a. She's, she's a, a digger, right? She's a thought. She's right. I. I. Yeah. I think one thing about Phil that a lot of people don't mention is that he's very down to earth. He's very grounded. Connor. Connor. <laughs> this was. This was your worst show yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was this was a Colorado Rockies performance out of Connor Griffin today. I was I was gonna make a joke uh, about you your, did about your leaky prostate, but then I held back on that one. When did my leaky prostate uh, the, the cock a leaky? We, like, we were tying that to my prostate. Yeah, yeah. I was, that, uh, but I was like, yeah, I'll hold back on that. Why are we tying cock a leaky to anything but soup? <laughs> like, what are we? Why doing? are you so offended? You. You just got the soup bracket assignment like two weeks ago. You're not Mr. Soup now. I, I just, I've learned childish show. A bit childish how we are here. <laughs> I mean, look how we're talking about groundhogs. Yeah. Grow up, guys. <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Uh, Brandon, do you have another thing you'd like to tell the people? I believe you do. I don't. Oh, I. Oh, yes, I do. I you do. Yeah. Uh, Jägermeister. Not only are they this presenting sponsor of the show, they also present the uh, the damn that's cold minute. You ever watch sports and something happens, you're like, damn that's cold. Well, yes. Yeah, sorry. I Mark is getting some that damn question. that's cold yes. shots for us right now. Yep, I'll take this one. We're gonna need uh, four or five, however many. Anybody, Ebo? Anybody watching sports yesterday? See, you see a moment, and you're like, damn that's cold. I did. I have one, but you guys go ahead. Well, you should. You should the, probably give yours. The kid on uh, the Greek kid on UConn comes in. UConn's up by a thousand, yeah, uh, like they are in every game they play now. Uh, and the Greek kid, I wrote his name down. Apostolos 
Rumaglu. Uh-huh. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Um, he comes in with the, uh, I say it affectionately, the scrubs. He's in he's in garbage time. Mm-hmm. Um, I can say that I was I was a scrub myself. Mm-hmm. He uh, and he takes a three and hits it. And Dan Hurley looked mad at him, but uh, I was saying to myself, "Damn, that's cold." The, UConn was up by a thousand. They're throwing in their guys just to get a little, uh, just to get in the box score. Yeah. They're, they're trying to run out the clock. And uh, Rum Rumaglu, Rumaglu takes a three, splashes it in San Diego State's face. And I thought, "Damn, that's cold," because not only is San Diego State getting their ass kicked, even when even when the Huskies, Connor, are you ready for this one? Mm-hmm. Even when UConn called off the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> His reaction just, just, I got to laugh. Like, it's funny. I don't know. Connor's very funny. <laughs> he, just, he just does funny things. That was funny. Even when, here you go, boys. Come get your uh, Jägermeister shots. Uh, even when UConn called off the dogs, they were still handing it to San Diego State and I thought, damn, that's cold. These guys are these guys are so good that they even when they're trying to not be that good, they're still good. This is so, a frosty shot. Damn, that's cold. Cheers to Apostolus Rumaglu and apologies if I'm butchering your name. I Mm-mm-mm. Damn that's cold. Damn that's cold. It is actually very cold. <laughs> it's it actually very cold. It goes down smooth. Yeah. Uh what else before we get out of here? Uh, Anything else? I don't know. Well, we had the groundhog sex of the super gonorrhea. Um, it's Good Friday. Are you guys going to celebrate in any way? Or no? Okay. No. I'll have. I'll make a nice ham for Easter. Nice. Uh, we have a big meal planned, but nobody's coming up to celebrate it. But we'll. we'll the family will have a nice Easter meal. Oh, we will. No, no, my my. We're gonna. My other. We're gonna. You guys going? No, no, we're all going. Ta- ta- Mark, this. The I got nothing yeah. planned. This is awkward. This is awkward. This is, uh, I actually have another family. I have a, what? I have a. Are, what? Are, are you? Are, I have. Are a, you? Are you? Are you, are you, are you fucking me? <laughs> I have a. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Bloodman. <laughs> <laughs> He's so offended. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a wife and four kids that I also refer to as my family. Is that? A, Cool or no? You gotta find a new term. That's confusing. It's too confusing. Your relatives? <laughs> my your my, kin. My my kin. Your kin. My relatives. Um, you're you're a ham, an Easter ham family. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. You do Christmas ham as well. Uh, I think we do turkey for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Turkey for Christmas. Turkey yeah. for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we do actually, uh, Thanksgiving, we do turkey and ham. Mm. Oh, so if really? you don't like turkey, you always have a ham at my house. Turkey. Mm-hmm. Turkey. 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 <laughs> um, all right. All right. What are you doing for Easter, Connor? Well, uh, family coming to town? No. It's funny. Uh, I asked a question. Today, today I'm going to be uh, probably making a frozen pizza and then. Sunday, I have to figure out what I'm doing. Just as Sunday. the apostles did on Good Friday. Um, they, well, you know me. They, they made a frozen pizza. Um, Threw a DiGiorno into the oven. <laughs> for, I, I can't eat meat today. To mark the occasion. Not delivery, Jesus. Um, but yeah, Sunday I have to figure out. So we'll see. Maybe I go to Wisconsin. I don't know. Or maybe I go a little bit further down and uh, stick in Illinois to a place that's closer to Wisconsin. But who's, I don't know. Who's going? Is someone going to your. Anyone that works here going to your Easter? Mine? Yeah. No. Oh, no one that works here is going to your Easter. No. You're not going to go to his Easter? With... Okay. Mark, what's happening? I... I won't say anything. Uh, I have no idea. Um, Is the Easter bunny and the eggs the most insane uh-huh. thing? Yeah. The well... The most insane holiday tradition we have is... is I guess you say that. We, and eggs. we did just decide. We, we just at some point convinced every child in america that a fat white guy comes down your chimney yeah um and leaves shit for you well, that's why i ask because i feel like there are a lot, that's insane there are a lot too. of candidates yeah tooth fairy pretty insane tooth fairy not really a holiday yeah. but like uh, yeah that's a that's a pretty insane thing as well is is your your tooth gets ripped out of your uh-huh. head and for most children when it happens the first time it is a horrific experience yeah and then you tell them it's okay it's okay it's okay calm down 
when you're sleeping, a stranger is going to come into your bedroom. <laughs> and, uh, I give you a dollar. I give you one dollar and take your tooth. Um, and then you reach a certain age and you're like, what the fuck is that guy doing with my teeth? <laughs> what? You want my teeth? We never really not? properly yeah, explained that never, one. Uh, yeah, you do tooth fairy at your house? Um, yeah. I, I feel like yeah. when I'm... I'm about out of it. I mean, when my, I'm a my parent, last kids. Yeah, when I'm a parent, I don't know if... Tooth like, fairy is the what, one do you... Do you have excitement for that? Like, what? Or is, that feels like it's like a... What the fuck am I doing? I'm yeah. sneaking in my kids. By the last know. kid and his last tooth, you're like, all right, whatever. Just tell me tell me the night before, I'll give you 20 bucks. <laughs> I work for the Tooth Fairy, so yeah. you just, like, we don't have to do the whole show. That is the just easiest. tell me what you want, and I'll hand it to you. And, and, and In fact, I'm just going to skip. Listen, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. Tooth Fairy's not real. Here, just take some <laughs> Here's <money>. $20. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. And that's the show. Thank you to Jack Olkey, but also fuck Jack Olkey. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to kill this man in a three-point contest. That I, I really – I'm not trying to make excuses. I just – I'm tired. I'm tired, Brandon. What do I do? Lose? Is, this, is this just my life now? Everybody that comes in every every March, somebody's going to get hot in March. Have a good two games. Dan's going to invite them here, and, and you're going to have to answer to it. And then they're just going to challenge me to a three point contest. And it's always going to be a white guy because it's barstool. So it was just it's, this Jack Oakey is the first of many, buddy. Yeah, I guess that's just what I am to this company. Is I'm the mm -hmm. I'm the and nobody even talks about me having beaten Dwayne Jefferson in the 1997 West Point High School Slam Dunk Contest. You should be the slam dunk guy. He played in Greece. <laughs> if we get, I don't think Golgi can dunk. If if we get like Zion, <laughs> Mac through, McClung versus Brady. Yeah, Walker. Mac McClung versus Brady. If Mac McClung comes through, you should have to do a slam dunk contest against Mac McClung. Um, Liam's that, back. What? What? I, <laughs> well, I man, you get the final word. Go ahead, say what I you was need to say. Disappointed. Okay, that's the final word. Thanks, it. family. All right. Thanks. No, 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 no. The final word of the show for the week goes to you right now in three, two, one. Okay, this is all one word. Make sure to vote on the soup bracket final four. That's the show. Thanks for watching. Please Actually, subscribe. No point however, you are consuming this content. Um, <laughs> there's no point. I just hit realized. subscribe for us. That would do us I'm a huge doing the favor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. To, I don't know, I'm just, don't I'm just vote on that. There's I'm just trying to power through it, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to everybody who sent in stuff yesterday. Uh, it was I went home and, and thought back on opening day, and it was very awesome. And uh, Can I say something? I'm very thankful for the, the audience that we have. Go ahead. What you just said is correct. But this is uh, not to get sappy at all. But when we started this show, we wanted to have a fun show where we talked sports and uh, other goofy stuff and just see where it went. I didn't know we would build an audience that fucking cool. Like, like this audience, be it from the Reddit, Reddit mostly sports or the YouTube commenters, they're all positive. They're all in it. They're engaged. They they like each other. They like us, and it's really they even. You can tell that they're nice people because they like Connor, and they like Connor. Yeah, that's what's crazy. They 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 really give us. Yeah. They give us great feedback. They they participate with us. They they sent us seventy four gifts yesterday. Seventy three of them were incredible. Uh, it's just this audience that we have is amazing. Look at this Dale collection I'm building here. Yeah. By the way. So Look shout out to question. when you start I'm, a show, you don't know which direction it's going. I, I don't think anybody could be more pleased with the direction this show's going. I'm gonna hold the Jagermeister so you can see the Dale collection. I'm just holding my hands. I'll get this. I'll get Jack Golke. He's not. What a what a fucking dick, dude. Yeah. First of all, Golke signs in a different color. Secondly, he signs on the point of. <laughs> he signs on the part of the board yeah. that covers up Dale. Well, also, I'm not. I mean, I think we're somebody's escaping a little blame here. Connor Griffin, bringing him a green pin. I was off my game with Golki. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this Dale situation I got going on. Here, just, just. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh, here, give me the, give me the. Do you think that anyone ever called him Golki before? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Plumman, you sh you shut up. Um, I, a genuine question. Like they grow up his entire life. Plumman, we asked that. Plumman, we already asked that. Oh, did you ask him? No, we asked uh, ourselves. That seems like a missed opportunity. <laughs> you only get one God chance to ask him that. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for oh watching. We'll God. see you on Monday. <laughs> That's how Paul is done. Family. <laughs>